Now let's talk a little bit about how these different memory technologies uh, and the memory hierarchy fit into our overall system diagram. Let's start at the very top of the memory hierarchy, uh, or at level zero, which is the registers in the register file, and these are right next to the ALU uh, on the CPU, and these are the fastest, but there is a very limited number of them. Um, the uh, next levels are the different levels of caches, which we'll talk a little bit more about next time. Uh, and these are on the CPU, but uh, not directly connected to the ALU, uh, typically. Uh, it's uh, going to be a little bit slower to access these, but again, they are still uh, quite fast, and it's important to try to use these as much as possible because they are still on the CPU. The next level is off the CPU, uh, out in main memory. Again, this is generally where the technology switches from SRAM to DRAM, uh, and the uh, amount of uh, memory that we have uh, takes a, a huge jump, but of course the latency does as well. The next level is uh, L5, which is the uh, secondary storage, uh, and this is even further away from the CPU, uh, connected over the I.O. bus, and generally these are even larger, but even slower, uh, another order of magnitude difference. And then finally, we have remote secondary storage, uh, which are not even on the same computer, uh, but are connected via some sort of network. So uh, just in summary, again, we have registers and cache memory, which are SRAM, and they are directly on the CPU. Uh, they, uh, the next level is main memory, or DRAM, which are accessed using bus transactions over the I.O. bridge. Uh, there are disk drives for secondary storage uh, that are connected via the I.O. bus. Uh, and require um, memory or device controllers in order to access them. Uh, we'll see in a second how uh, the CPU um, can uh, start a transaction between main memory and a uh, disk drive, and then uh, the disk drive and the um, uh, memory can uh, communicate directly via something called direct memory access. Uh, and then finally, there are other uh, memories, uh, such as graphics cards or network storage, and these are all connected to the I.O. bus using expansion slots. So let's talk for a second about the direct memory access. So uh, typically, uh, in order to move a value from, for instance, uh, from disk to uh, main memory, the values would need to be read into the CPU and then written into main memory. Uh, but of course, this is a little bit roundabout. And uh, in fact, the CPU doesn't really need to be involved in this. And so uh, if your hardware supports direct memory ac access, which is uh, pretty ubiquitous now, the CPU will simply initiate the disk, the disk read. Uh, and then after that, the disk controller and the memory controller can uh, communicate directly uh, to move the data without the CPU being involved. Once the memory transfer is done, then the disk will notify the CPU that it's finished. Uh, and this is much faster than reading data uh, into registers and then storing them uh, into memory. And it has the added benefit that the CPU can be doing other things while this is going on. So uh, it's really important to understand the differences that we're talking about here. Uh, these things are order of magnitude, uh, are, are often order of magnitude different in terms of their latency. Uh, this is one way that people often visualize this using these little uh, squares. So over here we have little uh, one nanosecond squares and you can see that there's an L1 cache reference over here and there's an L2 cache reference over here. Uh, but the uh, uh, the access to a solid state drive is way over here with the green dots. One green dot is the same as 100 blue dots, and one blue dot is the same as 100 black dots. So you can see that there is just an enormous difference between the, um, the, S, the, um, the, L, the cache references and the uh, SSD uh, accesses. And then there's another uh, after that, there's another jump after that for the, the magnetic. Uh, disk seeks. So uh, the, the the squares are still a little bit abstract, uh, and so another way that I think is maybe a little more relatable is to think about scaling these up by a billion to get them to uh, sort of the time scale that we're used to thinking about as human beings. So if we do that, then an L1 cache reference becomes half a second, which is sort of a, a, a heartbeat. Uh, an L2 reference is kind of a long yawn. On this time scale, then, uh, a main memory reference is 100 seconds. So we go from you know something that's on the order of seconds to something that's on the order of minutes. 
uh, in order to access. And that's a big difference, which means that it's going to be a lot slower to go to main memory than it is to access something that's in one of our caches. There's a significant jump for network activity. Here are the SSD reads, which are now on the order of days as, com as compared to seconds or minutes. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, disk seek for the magnetic drive is now on the order of weeks, um, which is, you know, uh, on the order of, you know, an entire semester. <laughs> uh, and so it's pretty stark, the difference between these, right? And hopefully this gives you some sort of sense of how important it is to try to use the higher levels of memory hierarchy whenever we possibly can, because it is so incredibly slower to go to the lower levels. Uh, there's a, a really terrific uh, snippet of uh, a pretty famous computer scientist uh, named Grace Hopper uh, as she talks about the importance of being aware of these limits on latency. Uh, and in particular, uh, she has these uh, little metal um, wires that she uh, had created for um, some uh, some students to illustrate you know how uh, you know the basically uh, the distance that uh, a signal can travel in a particular period of time which is sort of a fundamental limit on on latency so uh, if you have a couple minutes I really highly encourage you to watch this video it's it's uh, it's humorous but it, it's also uh, touches on a really important concept <laughs>